Okay, guys. So, good day. Hope you're doing fine. This is the second part of our um, oncological nursing. This is meant for your afternoon session. Okay. So, this one, uh, we have uh, last we, last time we discussed about the clinical manifestations, the definition, the prevalence. Okay. And we also differentiate between the malignant and benign types of tumor. Now, we're going to kick off by going to the diagnostic test as discussed earlier. Um, there are assessment and diagnostic methods in determining tumors or cellular aberration. It uh, has these four as stated last time. The marker identification, genetic profiling, imaging studies, and bi um, biopsy would be discussing that. Okay, as um, nurses that are right hand of the doctor or assistants to the doctors or for example you would become doctors yourself someday okay this is um, a thing especially in oncological um, studies for you to grasp on or at least have an idea about okay let's move on to the next slide okay so I have here the slide I've already had notes here in advance to save time Okay, let me just add some notes. Okay, so we have here the tumor staging system. So it involves both assessment for benign and malignant tumor. It's more of describing um, the extent, location, and uh, area of invasion, the cancer cells, or um, the abnormal cells um, are okay so first of all um, we have the tumor staging or the TNM TNM is here in the right side okay so TNM ex um, stands for your extent of primary tumor or T for the tumor N is for your lymph node and M is for your metastasis or spread okay so staging determines the size of the tumor for your T Existence of local invasion, uh, the local nodes meaning, and then the distant metastasis or the extent of the, those cells where they are um, going or spreading. Okay, this is usually um, used for tumor staging. Okay, so take note, this tumor staging is for both benign and malignant. And then we have here, um, I've already placed it here. So what part of assessment? Usually that you would be assessing your lymph nodes. It's by the use of your palpation. Sir, what if um, the tumor is um, beyond or beyond palpation? Kung wari, mga internal na siya, inside the intestine or colon, the colon. Do we still have to do that? Um, yes, usually you have to assess that area or part. And then later on, it would be backed up by a diagnosis or um, laboratory test or biopsy if ever operation or surgery is needed okay let's move on to the assessment diagnostic methods we have the stages okay stages of tumor let me just go here by passing okay so stage one oh, easy level or yung chill level yung first stage natin okay so what are the let me just simplify these words the tumor is less than 2 cm. So, maliit lang siya. And then, wala siyang lymph node affectation sa mga karatig area. In the near areas, there are no enlargement of your lymph nodes. I'll just put negative lymph node. And then, there's no metastasis. I'll just put METS for short. Okay. So, for stage 1, what is it again? Less than 2 cm. Maliit lang siya. It's negative lymph node. There's no swelling or inflammation of your nearby lymph nodes. And there's no detectable metastasis. Natural kasi there's no lymph node involvement. Nga. Okay, first stage 2. Second level or sta second stage. The tumor is greater than 2 cm. Sorry for this one. 2 cm. But it's less than 5. Okay. There may be negative or positive lymph node. So, you could uh, either palpate or you could either see or not see um, inflammation of lymph nodes in stage 2. But, luckily, there is no metastasis. No mets. 
hindi pa siya kumakalat. So, makikita mo lang inflamed kasi medyo malaki na yung tumor, yung nearby lymph nodes, but um, no metastasis. Okay, again, the size, 2, greater than 2 but uh, less than 5. Okay, so 4.9 cm, pasok pa siya sa banga. Less than 5 kasi siya, di ba? So, um, it may have positive or negative enlargement of your lymph nodes involvement and then no metastasis stage 3 when you say stage 3 this is usually greater than oops sorry my bad stage 3 it's greater than 5 cm positive na siya sa lymph node tapos um, dito naman din still negative metastasis again What's the difference of stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3? So, this is for mastery purposes. Stage 1, it's less than 2. Negative lymph nodes, negative mets. For stage 2, greater than 2, but less than 5. They, there may be positive or negative lymph nodes, but no metastasis. For stage 3, it's greater than 5. There's positive lymph node involvement or invasion. Or in this case, it says oh, on the skin chest, Okay. And clavicular area. Pag kinapa mo dito, yan. Enlarged yung ano, lymph nodes dito sa area ng ating um, clavicular area. Pero, negative mets. Okay, when we say stage 4. This is not stage 4 cancer class, ha? Let me remind you again. It's just stages of tumor. We're not saying stages of cancer pa. Okay? It's just the stages of tumor. Okay, so stage 4, sa size, any size. Sir, seryoso, kahit 1cm lang yun, hindi ba namin makaklasify yun na um, stage 1? Okay, so let me finish off with this lecture first. Okay, let me just turn off my picture so that there would be spaces for the notes. Okay, size would be any size. There may be positive or negative lymph nodes. And, yeah, positive mets. Okay. So, pag nakita nyo na yung positive metastasis, regardless of the size, regardless of the presence or um, absence of your lymph node activity or involvement, automatically, it falls under the category of stage 4. So, that's easier to understand, di ba? So, any size... There's um, involvement or non-involvement of your lymph nodes. Plus the positive metastasis automatically, it's stage 4. Okay. So that um, eases or sums up this slide. Okay. So further assessment of the TNM. Okay. So when kanina we talked about stage, this is more of your classifications. Or what you could see. When we say, um, you could see this in um, your chart, TX, T0, TIS, okay, T1, T2, T3, T4. Okay, so let's just first focus on the primary tumor or your tumor. Okay, so when we say TX, tumor is not present. That's why parang TX, wala. Walang tumor dun sa area na yun. It cannot be assessed. Okay, T0, sir, what's the difference of T0 with Tx? Okay, there is changes seen, parang may laboratory test for two more, but there's still no evidence. You can prove it for primary two more. Okay, TIS. There is carcinoma involved already. So, TIS. And then, when we say T1, T2, T3, T, uh, T3, T4, it is um, the size. It includes already the size, the local extent of the primary tumor. Okay, later on, we'll be classifying the T1, T2, T3, T4. It's, this is just the characteristics, okay, or 
um, system. Again, DX, there's no indicatory for cancer or tumor in the patient. Okay, both in laboratory and diagnostics. Um, T0 or TO if you want to, to call it. Uh, there is no evidence of primary tumor despite there is um, basis seen in your laboratory or diagnostics. TIS, there's positive. It can be seen already in diagnostics or laboratory the TIS carcinoma and um, T1, T2, T3 and T4 there's already tumor that has the indicative size extent of that primary tumor okay so when we say nodes or letter N <coughs> excuse me sorry for that it NX means regional lymph nodes cannot be assessed so when you assess the lymph nodes they're really not present okay so this one is um, unassessed unable uh, cannot be assessed this is the keyword okay so when we say n0 there is changes in the lymph nodes but parang inflamed lang siya pero it's not um, pronounced or affected talaga din. Okay, so um, there is no affectation in the regional lymph node. For example, you're more on the uh, laryngeal. If you're checking laryngeal CA or tumor in the larynx or um, that localized area. When you palpate for the lymph nodes, you could see that uh, there are lymph nodes that are inflamed, but it's not affected na hindi talaga siya super inflamed na malalaki. And then, um, N1, N2, N3, there is um, affectation in lymph nodes, usually swollen na yan, mainit na siya, and then there are other signs and symptoms. Okay, so, ang pinakamadali sa lahat is yung metastasis. MX, walang metastasis with the laboratories and diagnostics. Uh, M0 there is probable metastasis but it does not spread and later on M1 yan, nag-spread na siya kumalat siya dun sa hindi na siya dun sa localized area it spread out in the nearby areas so it's much more easier okay okay, so let me just be clear on that one Sige. So, sorry pero medyo magulo. Let me just clarify. Okay? So, MX, there is no metastasis talaga. It's just localized in that specific area. No distant metastasis. Okay? You have your cancer or your um, metastasis. It's just on your, for example, it's just gastric. It's just localized in your gastric area. It does not spread in your intestine or your ano or your other parts, your lungs or the nearby organs. And then when you say distant metastasis, it involves other organs. Organs or system. <coughs> Sorry for that. Okay, so that's clear. Okay, so here's the stages classification ten stages okay yung grading nila by characteristics okay so for stage 0 for your TNM classification there's carcinoma in the um, in the system tumor is in uh, in system there is no nodule and there's no metastasis sir san kinuha yan balik tayo dito ito TX, T0, TIS, T1, T2, 3, T3, T4, regional limb, ayan, and then yung MX. Let's go back. For stage 1, for classifications and grading system, or staging system, okay, for stage 1 of the cancer, the tumor invades the mucosa and submucosa. Therefore, you have tumor, T1, you have no involvement of your lymph nodes and no metastasis. Okay. Buray natin. Sir naman, ginugurihan nyo. Hindi tuloy namin makita. Sorry naman. Okay. Layan niya mabura. Okay. So, yan na lang. 
let me just use a pointer okay here we go okay so for stage one we have here the tumor with size one you have your lymph node zero and metastasis zero and what if the stage one is involving it invades your muscularis or your muscular area you have your nodule involvement number two or it may have no nodule involvement okay but your metastasis is zero what if it's stage two okay you have two more three or t3 n0 metastasis zero okay the tumor perforates or directly invades the adjacent structure tumor number four nodule involvement would be none metastasis is zero okay katulad nung sinabi ko rin kanina or any size or any tumor size you have your nodule um what do you call this uh, affectations it's either nodule one or one to three metastasis zero nodule two two or more nodes yan. and nodule three there are any nodule involvement along the vascular trunk so when we say the vascular trunk diba it's um your system or trunkal area diba dito sa chest area natin pag may mga inflamed dimethyl area na yan more than four or young inflammation in that area that means there's um, nodular involvement there that's stage three okay this is just a in-depth um, chart of what you have discussed earlier and for stage four um, sa size ng tumor it would be any nodule it may or may not have or any of the nodule and matic if there is metastasis automatic the bus stage furniture this is just an in-depth chart of what you have discussed earlier okay so for tumor grading sir nakakatuwa naman yan may characteristics na siya it has its characteristics it has its stages may grading pa di ba so yan lang this is um the grading how we grade the tumor okay so this one classes the classifies the tumor cells it seeks to define the types of tissues from which the tumor originated okay so more on why do we have to uh, check for this one we have to trace the origins okay so where it originated to notify the degree of function and to have histological characteristics okay so bakit siya grinigrade ng ganito again it seeks to define the types of tissue from which the tumor originated the degree of which the tumor cells retain the functional histological characteristics of tissue of origin for differentiation okay it uses the numeric value ranging from 1 to 4 again t1 to t4 parang this is just the um defined version for it okay so t1 let me just remove this t1 would be your well differentiated madali ma identify and then t4 would be poorly differentiated dito naka depend yung grade ng tumor okay let's go on oops this is just the grading for your tumor kanina in the version okay so what are the goals for treatment okay ang goal mo lang pag if you're going to treat tumor is first complete eradication so pag sinabi natin complete eradication um, we have the doctor would uh, the doctor in the nurse's school by medical or surgical management would be removing the malignant disease or malignant tumor or cell so when we say when um, the doctor would say cure um, cure for cancer 
okay, let me just uh, be um, frank with this one. When we say cure, there's still no cure for cancer. Let me just uh, talk straight for this. This one means cure, meaning is the absence of the malignant cells or the malignant tumor inside the body of the patient. That's why when we say um, the patient is cancer-free, upon test and diagnostics, there is no malignant um, cells or tumor seen in the patient. So that's um, what that that's the term they use for cure. Okay, so let's be um, frank with that. Hindi pa talaga siya na totally na eradicate, kasi pwede pa siya bumalik. But the doctors and the nurses or the medical staff could declare the patient um, cancer-free or cure from malignant disease. Okay, next one. The second goal is prolonged survival for the patient. Okay. And, oops, sorry, and containment, containment of the cancer cells. Okay, when you say prolonged survival, hindi yan yung para sa cancer cell. This is for your patient. Mag-survive yung patient mo and makontain nila, localize the, con- the cancer cells. Okay, when we say localize, the growth rate would be decreased or um would be on standstill. So when we say it's already controlled, the cancer is already controlled, um, there is containment of the cancer and there's no growth or decreased growth. Okay? And last but not the least, it would be relieved from the symptoms associated with the disease. Okay? Sige. So relieved from the symptoms, syempre the patient would have anemia, weakness, and other yung caution as and yung AWWP if you still remember that okay yung anemia weakness weight loss and pain yan that are the symptoms that would be relieved with the use of pal- um palliation okay let me emphasize in that again what's the goal and treatment for management of cancer or tumor malignant cell first is complete eradication Ano yung eradicate Yung malignant cells para matawag natin na cure. And then, what's your second goal? It's the prolonged survival for your patient. Okay? And also, containment of the cancer cell. It's localized. It will not grow or multiply. And it would be under control. Okay? So, for your control. And then, last but not the least, is to relieve for your symptoms. It's more of uh, palliation. Okay? So, yun. Cure, control, and palliation. That's your main three um, main three goals for treatment. Sige. Gawin natin acronym. Goals for treatment. CCP. What Again, again what is CCP? Cure, control, and palliation. Yan yung mga ating shortcut. Okay, so what are the, for medical treatment or management, those are the goals. So what are the therapies used for your surgical or surgical management? Okay, so usually in your surgical management, they would be removing the tumor. Ito yung mga OR cases nyo, yung tinatanggal yung mga cyst, tumor, at saka binabiopsy at the same time, okay? So, removal or extraction of tumor on whatever location or part of the body. That's your surgery. And then, number one, this one would be, sige, lagay na natin surgical and medical management. Okay? So, second one is your radiation therapy, also known as your chemotherapy. It may be used individually or combination. So, I won't be focusing more about this. Say this would be discussed in your pharmacology. But usually, chemotherapy, um, the goal for it is for your cure. It eradicates the malignant cells. But um, as radiation therapy and chemotherapy goes, syempre, uh, it would affect also your good cells. Therefore, it has also side effects or signs and symptoms that would be later discussed down the line of our management 
Next one would be another surgical procedure. It would be your bone marrow transplantation. Sir, bakit may involvement na ng bone marrow dyan? Remember, di ba, your bone marrow is or helps generates yung blood vessels natin. Okay? So, it also aids in the growth and uh, it is the storage for maturation of new blood vessels. Ah, blood vessels, sorry. Blood cells, okay? Not blood vessels. Blood cells. So, bone marrow transplantation helps in... Um, specific um, types of cancer especially in blood related types of cancer so since di ba doon nag-generate and nagmamature yung inyong mga blood cells and since di ba uh, it generates yung uh, what do you call this deformed or abnormal cells already due to the genetic modification due to cancer so therefore our new bone marrow transplantation would be uh, advised okay and then we have our other targeted target therapies for example your biologic response modifiers gene, gene therapy complementary and alternative medicine okay so yan biologic response modifiers gene therapy hindi gene na g hindi yung g i n na gene gene g e n e okay so therapy and complementary and alternative medicine Okay, so there are other um, therapies used. Okay, next. Okay, so here for the surgery, uh, I said earlier as well. So let me just correct this slide. Surgical or medical management. Okay, so the goal of the surgery is to remove the tumor. Yun nga din. As much as it is feasible. So kung baga nag-grow na siya, habang localized pa siya, Tanggalin mo na yung um, bad or yung localized tumor so that it won't spread to other system. That's why that's one of the goals of the um, surgery. Okay, so, di ba? May CCP na din tayo. Cure, um, palliation, and control. Pwede natin din idagdag yung removal. Yan yung goal natin. So again, yung removal, it's more of the surgical. It's to remove para hindi na siya maka-apekto dun sa iba. So para yan yung ano, di ba? Um, sasabihin sa inyo na, uy, hiwalay nyo nga yung bulok na kamatis dun sa magagandang kamatis. Bakit mo siya gagawin early? So why do you have to segregate the rotten tomatoes from the good tomatoes? Kasi there is a tendency that the rotten tomato would affect your good tomatoes. That's why as early as possible, you remove the rotten tomato so it won't be affecting the nearby good tomatoes. Basically, that's the good, uh, parang that's the goal of the surgery. Okay, so, types of surgery. Okay, maybe in a primary method of treatment. Okay, so this one is uh, early. And you have your prophylactic. For example, it's already metastasized and it damaged already your... Uh, ay, this is prophylactic. When we say prophylactic, uh, ahead of time or in advance. Okay, so there is detected growth of tumor in uh, certain types of cell. In advance, you have to do that surgery so that um, parang prevention is better than cure. You are suspecting it already, then you have to remove that part already or that organ already. Palliative, this is in the late stage. When they say palliative, um, it, it's causing the pain. And uh, it all it would be um, beneficiary for the patient if it, that tumor or organ is removed. Therefore, doing palliative surgery. surgery. When we say reconstructive, um, it's more of uh, bypassing that area. For example, um, the, there is colonic CA. The colon, the large intestine is large. What they do is they reconstruct the the large intestine. They would um, they would do bypass of certain parts of the colon, okay, so that uh, the removed part or the affected part would be um, avoided, okay. So that's one of your reconstructive. Parang magano sila. Gagawa they would uh, in 
if you are going to put it in a real world setting it's like um, there is a road here there is a there is a damaged road here for example um, the road here got um, what do you call this washed out by the sea okay so will you be doing another road over this one this is already damaged so what you're going to do is you're going to do a bypass road you do a reconstruction of the road so that um, the function would be um, still uh, functions would be still retained despite of the damaged area okay so for example there's a road and originally your road was here they would do a reconstruction of the road so that life goes on and the function of the system would be saved okay so that, that that's um what reconstructive mean okay so here maintaining okay so for nursing management take note future nurses or future doctors who are planning to go to med school afterwards you're a nurse in creed training so remember that nurses are caring once you become doctors don't forget that you were a nurse once okay so um, the care is very much different so remember where you came from okay so what's um the nursing management okay so for the nursing management you need to maintain skin tissue integrity so it means that uh, you would avoid skin further skin breakdown for these samples you have stomatitis um, there is um, already inflammation of the skin around the stoma or opening. So as nurses, you have to avoid um, or prevent the patient in having um, this kind of conditions. Okay, so sometimes skin integrity, um, the skin reacts also due to radiation therapy. Okay, this is also a part uh, when... Okay, so... If we talk about chemotherapy earlier, uh, when you say chemotherapy, it's um, or radiation therapy, it's toxic to cells, not only to the bad cells, but it's also toxic to the good cells. So, when you say radioactive or radiotherapy, um, it kills also your good cells. The target is your bad cells, but good cells die along the way. Good cells die along the way. Therefore, um, your skin protection, your skin is made up of cells. Therefore, your skin would be having irritations or reactions due to radiation therapy. Um, your hair is also made up of cells. Yung base or yung glands of your hair will be affected with the radiation therapy. Therefore, having your patients to have alopecia or fall out of hair or baldness. Usually, di ba, makikita niyan sa, it's always portrayed in uh, movies or dramas. Patients having radiation therapy or cancer or undergoing um, chemotherapy always has alopecia. Okay, so as much as possible, we have to maintain um, tissue integrity. Okay, and malignant skin conditions. You have to watch out for that. Okay. So, what are the nursing interventions that you have to do? Assess the oral cavities daily. Okay. Watch out for bleeding. Make sure that they are intact. Report for oral burning pain or areas, or redness, and oral lesions. Okay. Lesions is uh, parang wounds or opening or break in skin. And if there are pain in swallowing, because sometimes the throat is also affected. Next one, provide oral hygiene. Okay, so same is true with uh, dengue. Okay, not that aggressive brushing. Use brush with soft bristles. Okay, uh, use um, non-abrasive toothpaste after meals. Okay, so and at bedtimes. Uh, here, it also says that avoid tobacco and alcoholic beverage and commercial mouthwash. Why? Diba? So, sir, bakit naman? Bakit bawal tobacco and alcoholic beverages and commercial mouthwash? So, okay, tobacco has irritant substances in the mouth. Therefore, irritants, since um, patients is having impaired tissue integrity, it might cause oral lesions in prolonged use. That's why we ask our patients to avoid tobacco, alcoholic beverages, iba ang alcohol, 
in any type of percentage have a sting in it. Yung medyo masakit or mahapde pag ginagamit or sometimes um, as part na rin with the chemotherapy, your mouth is not that acquainted. Uh, the patient with cancer's mouth is not that acquainted with strong beverages as well. So it has a reaction in the gums. Therefore, um, the gums being irritated would be swelling and it could lead to lesions or irritation in the oral area. Same is true with mouthwashes kasi some mouthwashes are built really strong for mouth cleansing. That's why you have to instruct your patient to have um, safe oral hygiene. Okay? Next one. Okay, so here we have stomatitis or singao. What are the nursing interventions? Use NSS for mouth rinses. Okay, if ever the patient is having dentures, after meals, ask them to remove it. Kasi uh, if your patient slept with the dentures, sometimes the dentures would fall off or misfit while sleeping. Then the patient would either bite or accidentally injure himself or herself with the dentures. That's why I make sure to remove the dentures and clean it after and then make sure that they fit to avoid the slips and uh, accidental punctures in your mouth or the patient's mouth use water soluble lip lubricants avoid foods that are spicy hard to chew and within extreme of temperature that's preserving your oral cavity that's for your mild stomatitis and for your severe stomatitis or your mga singaw na sobra sobra obtain tissue sample for CS Access gag reflex, ability to chew and swallow, provide liquid or puree diet. This one is assisting your nutritional intake and monitor for dehydration. Kasi yun nga, it's severe stomatitis. Pag umiinom or kumakain, masakit or nasasaktan or nagagrabyado. That's why you have to monitor the hydration status and assist in um, nutrition intake. For severe stomatitis. Next one. We talked about chemotherapy in passing. Managing radiation associated impairments. Okay, so provide skin careful skin care. So avoiding use of soap, cosmetics, perfumes, powders, lotions, ointments, and deodorants. Usually for people who have undergone radiation associated skin impairment, chemicals react to chemicals just remember that okay so when the patient has undergone radiation therapy um let's uh ask the patient to avoid using soap cosmetics perfumes powders and ointments or deodorants that may react to the radiation therapy so so ibig sabihin yan hindi na maliligo yung patient namin kasi hindi na magde-deodorant so babaw yung patient namin okay so Pwede naman maligo. Number two, use only lukewarm water to bathe. Pero after, right after therapy, or if you're seeing skin impairments due to radiation, uh, you could ask your patient to cleanse up with lukewarm water. Take note, lukewarm water. Sir, kumukulo pa yan? Hindi, maligam-gam lang yan na tubig. For foreigners, lukewarm is not that hot and not that cold. So it's in the middle middle temp of both worlds okay so that's what you call lukewarm okay next one avoid applying hot water bottles heating pads and ice adhesive tapes to the area why okay so usually um, radiation associated skin impairments usually the patient has decreased especially for patients having after chemotherapy yung sensitivity ng patients nyo is impaired due to the therapy and their body is reacting because of the medications or therapy that were given to them or chemotherapy. So, avoid muna yung hot, sorry, avoid muna yung applying hot water. Hot water, sometimes the patient would not, uh, see, parang diabetic patients, they would not feel well or they could not sense well if the um, hot bottle or pads would be applied to them so it would cause either further burns or injury to the skin okay so take note the sensory or perception of the patients right after chemotherapy would be impaired that's why you avoid extreme temperatures okay so makikita nyo dito you have hot and extreme cold 
after cold ice. So, hindi nila nararamdaman yan. Adhesive tapes to the area since skin is irritated. And sometimes, tape when forgotten in the patient's skin. When you remove it, so minsan, we cared for patients who have undergone... Um, let me just turn on my camera. We cared for patients who have undergone chemotherapy. They have really sensitive skin. That's why we use hypoallergenic tape or sometimes we don't use adhesive tapes at all. Kasi... Once you pull the adhesive tapes, sumasama talaga yung balat. The skin would peel off with your tape. That's why we do not um, we do not uh, encourage to use adhesive tapes for the patients. Okay. Another thing, uh, sir, what if pa, eh, sir, paano naman yun? The undergone chemotherapy. Paano po yung mga pinagtusukan ng laboratories? Paano po yung mga injection sites or yung IV sites? How would they ano manage that one? Okay, so they use hypoallergenic tapes if really needed or sometimes um, dun sa mga punctured sites na tinanggal rin yung needle without the needle, they would use compression lang. They would ask the patient or the relatives of the patient to press on and use compression to that area, therefore avoiding the use of tape. And last but not the least, do not shave the area kasi hypersensitive yung skin ng patient using of sharp objects would cause either skin impairments further to the patient. So remember, um, patients that has re uh, undergone radiation therapy or chemotherapy has high risk of skin impairment. Okay, take note of that. Next slide would be... Sorry. Okay. This one is also part of the skin care. Uh, this one are mostly self-explanatory. First is avoid rubbing or scratching the area. Same is true. Uh, exposure to sunlight or cold. That's with our temperature, our hot and cold weather. I've explained the rationale earlier. Okay, so avoid wearing tight clothing over affected area. So what does um, tight clothing do to the affected area? First of all, tight clothing has compression. Okay, so sir, ano naman meron sa compression? So, compression has pressure on it. Pressure on that area. Sir, sabi nyo kanina, pressure is good for that area. I was saying earlier that pressure is only good for a certain amount of time, especially if it, the site is bleeding. And ano, but compression, it's wearing, you're wearing it, so hindi mo naman siya tinatanggal agad, di ba? Alam namang, you just wore your tight um, clothing. The patient would wear that tight clothing and then later on, you would ask him to uh, remove it. So, um, avoid pressure on that area, on the affected area, kasi it might cause skin breakdown or damage. Okay, next one. If ever your patient develops um, blisters, okay, so blisters are, di ba? For example, here is the skin of the patient. Hand. Okay. So, this is the IV site. Yung pinagtusukan ng chemotherapy or ng radiation therapy. If ever the patient would develop blisters, this is parang um, elevation or bevels in the skin. Usually contained with water. That's the... It has shiny skin there. Um, do not disrupt it. You might be tempted to poke it and burst it, but do not. And uh, ins instead of poking it, document it. If you could um, check or uh, note the size, it would be much um, better. You must report it and use the prescribed ointments to avoid um, skin opening and breakdown. Okay. Next one. Let me remove my face again so that you could focus on the slides. Okay, so here, we are here in addressing alopecia. So, we've talked about earlier, alopecia is the loss of hair. Okay. So, another thing, a uh, unique thing with us nurses is when you know the intervention, you develop also your health teaching. Okay, so when chemotherapy is applied to the patient or radiation therapy is um, being given to the patient, instruct your patient or have health teaching that when you go or undergo chemotherapy there is a potential of hair loss but don't worry the patient might be worrying oh my hair will be lost uh, how can i manage that or nurse will my hair return back to normal the answer is yes uh, regrowth is possible after the treatment naman so 
while the treatment is ongoing, expect the patient to have hair loss. Okay, next one, <clears throat> explore the potential and impact of hair loss on self-image in interpersonal relationship. For example, um, let's say your patient is a really um, influential person. Uh, he relies on he or she relies on his or her look. Okay, so you explore the potential of uh, impact on his or her self-image or perception of self and interpersonal relationship. Help him or her plan. Uh, diba? Usually, ganyan naman yan. So, you help out. And then, you would see that he or her might be depressed. You're there to do therapeutic communication. And there's a community or the family members must be involved with this one as well. Okay, so ways in coping hair loss. Okay, these are your health teachings or possible suggestions to your patients. So, you may purchase a wig or hairpiece before the hair loss. So, mamili na in advance. But at least, okay, this hairstyle would suit you. If ever you're ongoing treatment, you wear a wig so that parang wala lang nangyari, okay? So, either wear a head covering, use a bonnet, use a hat, or whatever the preference of your patient or the cancer patient would be. Prevent or minimize hair loss, okay? So, this one is usually conditioning. Uh, for guys, it's much more easy. They shave their hair prior to the treatment so that people would get used to that look. Okay, next one would be avoid excessive shampooing and hair processing. Because prior to, um, usually chemicals would either irritate also your hair aside from the radiation therapy. So avoid excessive shampooing or hair um, processing. Avoid excessive combing or brushing. This one is forced in your hair because um, your patient might be brushing and combing his hair vigorously, therefore increasing the hair loss. Okay, instead na konti lang yung mawawala sa patient mo na hair, tas excessive naman yung brushing and combing niya, yun, naubos yung hair ng patient niyo. <clears throat> and lastly, explain the hair growth usually begins again once the therapy is completed. Okay, so that's more of the patient interaction and patient teaching. Let's move on to the next slide. Managing mali uh, malignant skin lesions again. So carefully assess and cleanse the skin. Again, with no strong chemicals or cleansing agents. Assist and guide the patient and family regarding skin lesion care at home. Okay, this is important. Let me emphasize on this one. Um, usually, the patient's relatives, you, you must involve the patient's relatives when they go home. Kasi <clears throat> they might be um, reliant on you doing the skincare always. Later on in their part of your nursing care, you teach one significant other or your, a companion on how to do it so that they would gain confidence that before they go home, at least they're confident enough to help out with the skin lesion and skin care for the patient. And last but not the least, if ever there is um, no person responsible to take care of the patient, refer to a home health service if indicated or available in that area. Okay, this is more of the nursing management. So we're done already with the um, skin lesions and alopecia. Next one would be promoting nutrition. So again, A, WWP, A, anemia, and weight loss. So for having anemia and weight loss, we, have, we must provide proper nutrition and proper sustenance of vitamins and minerals. First, <clears throat> okay. So, avoid unpleasant sights, odors, and sound in the environment during mealtime. Why is it? Kasi, um, kasi, I spoke Tagalog. Because uh, unpleasant sights, odors, and sounds in the environment during mealtime may cause the patient to go on nausea and vomiting. So, another side effect of radiation therapy, the patient could feel nauseous and could induce vomiting. So, di ba? Kumbaga, may chances na nga sila masuka or maging uh, masama yung pakiramdam, dadagdagan mo pa ng unpleasant sound, sights or door or sound the meal, during the meal time. So, to induce din yung appetite ng patient nyo, set a pleasant environment for meal consumption. Next is food prepared, preferred and well-tolerated by the patient. So, usually, 
kung ano yung gusto ng patient as long as it's high calorie kasi you want to replace um, energy to the patient or give energy to the patient and high protein food high protein is since may weight loss gusto mo mag build ng muscle mass so you encourage um, foods rich in calorie and protein okay next one encourage adequate fluid intake yun nga kasi malnutrition na yung, pa- yung patient mo um, ask the patient to have adequate fluid intake when we say adequate baka sabihin nyo ay sir kailangan nyo ubusin yan yung, yung fluid na yan 8 to 10 glasses uh, adequate means enough not to be dehydrated and not to be on fluid overload okay so what happens when you encourage large amount of fluid during meal time okay so the tendency is your patient would get uh, full already if you encourage a lot of fluids during meal time. Mabubusog na yung patient nyo, makawalan siya ng gana kumain. Eh, you need to replace um, calories and nutrients by eating food. Therefore, you limit your fluid intake during meal time and then encourage fluid intake in between na lang ng meals. Okay? If ever the patient is... Um, having loss <clears throat> for appetite for big or large meals okay use smaller and frequent feedings for example hindi niya kaya ng three times a day na marami yung breakfast lunch and dinner they would be dividing um, those meals to smaller breakdown for example six times siya kakain in a day breakfast is half there's a uh, in between meal before breakfast and lunch or brunch lunch time in half or one fourth and then um, a snack, and then later on, the dinner. So, it's broken down, and at least, hindi rin nasasayang yung food for the patient. Okay, another one is a relaxed, quiet environment during mealtime. Okay, with increased social interaction as desired. If ever na, syempre, naka, um, it would be depressing for the patient to be alone while eating, but as much as possible, um, it would uh, be pleasant enough to have a relaxed and quiet environment during meal time. Okay, so when we say social interaction, it means that there's at least someone with the person. At least ginaganahan siya kumain kasi, di ba, um, though despite the COVID-19 or the pandemic, it's good to eat with people, di ba? Uh, it boosts your, uh, what do you call this, appetite. So, usually, a presence of a certain person would increase or at least as desired by the patient would increase or um, make the patient eat more okay so yan uh, especially with us Filipinos we are used to eating um, in large groups kasi mas nakakagana pa kumain okay next nutritional supplements and high protein foods in between meals what I have said we want to replace um, supplements uh, supplement losses to be absorbed by the body and protein foods between meals. Okay, so frequent oral hygiene with its with its per, uh, precautions in what we have said earlier, and relieve of measures during meal time. And then last, if ever the patient feels nauseous or vomiting, we control it. Okay, so for this one, avoid oily foods. Um dry snacks usually kasi usually oily foods induce parang nausea or in vomiting so avoid oily foods and if ever may mga ice chips and crackers yan usually para sa food in, in case na um, nauseated or um, the patient has the urge to vomit uh, we could ask the patient to snack on those okay next one again for promoting nutrition Okay. Encourage verbalization of fears and concerns. Nung when I when I was reading this slide, <laughs> I was telling myself, why do I have to encourage the patient? What does does it have to do with nutrition? Okay, so there's a rationale here. Um, when the patient verbalizes his or her fears or concerns. The stress is lessened with the patient. So, verbalization of concerns and fears is an outlet of stress. So, when the patient is less stressed, 
especially um, after the radiology, uh, the chemotherapy or treatment, it would be promoting his GI tract to absorb food more. Okay, <clears throat> and this is a form of nagkakwento siya habang kumakain. Okay, so at least there's a uh, meal progression. So at the same time, uh, it induces your absorption for nutrients. Okay, so and last but not the least, di ba? Advise the family and friends not to nag about eating. Huwag niyong pipilitin yung patient or yung um, tao na nag-undergo ng treatment. Kasi, when you nag about patient, ikaw nga, um, uh, sinisermonan ka ng nanay mo habang kumakain ka. Magkakaroon ka ba ng gana kumain? O kaya, ano, sinasabi na lang na, ano, uh, kumain ka nga, kumain ka nga kasi kailangan mo yun kasi, uh, di ba nakakawalang gana yun kumain? So, Advise the family and friends not to nag about eating. Huwag pilitin yung pasyente. Kasi kung hindi naman niya, gustuhin man ng pasyente niya, gustuhin man ng patient na kumain, pero hindi naman niya kaya, wala din, madidepress lang yung patient. Kasi kung tatry niya, tas masusuka lang din siya, papagalitan din siya. So, parang it's um, degrading to the patient. At least give the patient chance to eat and the chance to uh, parang build his or herself up. Okay. So, it's more of psychological part, but it has to do with nutrition. So, for our collaborative management, okay, provide, if ever, nahirap talaga kumain yung ano, um, patient, provide enteral tube feeding for commercial or liquid diets, okay? So, when we say enteral feeding, dito na yung pumapasok yung ating NGT, yung patient, yun yung ilong ng patient. Meron tube na linalagay sa patient. That's called an NGT. Tapos pag sinabi natin tube feeding, meron niya na bulb syringe. Tapos dito niya ilalagay yung feeding. If ever hindi makalunok yung patient. Para masup- um, so that they could, uh, what they call this, absorb the nutrients, at least get some nutrients. So yung food, yan, didn't drip and it would go straight to the patient's stomach. Okay. So, that's um, enteral tube feeding as ordered. So, that's why it's called collaborative because you need to have the doctor's order for it. Hindi yung, as nurses, you would be um, inserting an in- NGT and then feeding the patient. So, you need collaborative management for that one. Okay, so the doctors would also prescribe how many kilocalories that is needed to the patient. In hand in hand, we would be working with the dietitians. That's why you've undergone nutrition for nurses. Okay, so it might be commercial liquids or diets, elemental diets, blenderized food or OF as prescribed. Okay, so administer appetite stimulants as prescribed by the physicians. These are your drugs that could have stimulants to increase your appetite. So um, those are already also ano. Um, considered to have for collaborative management. Okay, let's go to the slide only. Okay, so for relieving pain, this one. First one is what again? First one is for skin integrity. Next one we have for nutrition. 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 Third is for pain management. Okay, so with here, these are nursing management, but there's no nursing problem. So you have to generate the nursing problem by yourselves. Okay, so first, it's a multidisciplinary team approach. Okay, usually this is more of collaborative because your pain. Okay, so first of all, when we say pain, we have uh, your non formal or your non-pharmacological which is the uh, independent nursing and you have your pharmacological which is your collaborative okay in this point of pain relief you exhaust all your independent nursing you have your re- relaxation meditation diversion if uh, you have exhausted this all, usually we go to the collaborative part. That's why it's called multidisciplinary team approach. 
there is a team to manage pain and they would be uh, the ones to give medications for that one for optimal management okay so make sure to pay uh, to pay attention and acknowledge that the pain is real you might be saying or you might be non-therapeutic to your patient na oh it's not that painful hindi naman yung masakit eh nag inerte ka lang naman din eh okay so that's the tagalog term for it sasabihin natin na oh hindi naman totoo na masakit yan nag inerte lang yung patient natin maarte lang yung talaga so not not that one you're being um, non-professional and non-therapeutic so um For foreigners, that's um, saying that the patient is only more lingering or making up things. It's not that pain- painful, okay? It's just acting or being dramatic. It's being um, non-therapeutic and non-professional. So acknowledge that the pain is real because first of all, you're not exper- you're not the one experiencing experiencing the pain the pain, but the patient. Because he or she might have a low threshold for pain tolerance. So acknowledge that the pain is real. Next one is educate and support correct fear and misconceptions kasi sometimes pain is psychological. Dito yan pumapasok yung placebo. So, educate that um, correct the fear na um, for example, I might die uh, and then the patient gets um, psychosomatic disorders or um, the patient suddenly feels pain due to psychological stress. So, there comes the education to support and correct fear, mis- fears and misconception. Okay. <clears throat> so, take note of the strategical plan or the pharmacological management. Okay. So, here, do your non-pharmacological first. Try setting up the patient in a good environment, relaxed environment, not stimulating environment. Try make the divert the patient, let him watch TV, let him read the book so that he would forget the pain. If that doesn't work, check the pharmalo- pharmacological management. What pain relievers work with him? What pain relievers did not uh, work with him during the past pain experiences? So that's management of your pain via strategies. And if ever things would not work out, think of new strategies to relieve pain and discomfort. So it's here already, distraction, imagery, relaxation, continuous, and stimulation. Okay, so I encourage you guys to do the non-pharmacological nursing first. If it gets resolved for that, then good nursing care. But if it doesn't and it's really painful, there we go. We go to the, our collaborative nursing care. Okay, next one. Okay, so we're done with skin integrity. We're also done with um, nutrition and pain. We go to the tickless fatigue. This is for your AWWP. Okay, this is for your weakness. So the weakness in or decrease fat, uh, decrease fatigue um, target. So we need to uh, decrease the weakness for the patient. Okay, so make sure that the fatigue is temporary and expected with side effects for cancer process and treatment. Usually under treatment, after nila mag-treatment, feeling nila drain the drain sila. Wala silang energy. So tell your patient that the fatigue is only temporary. Um, make him or her work out or work in an in a tolerated manner or in the pacing of the patient for the patient not to be used to that sedentary lifestyle or that um, parang weakness, feeling of weakness. Okay, so usually it takes time and it takes a lot of effort and motivation. Next one is arrange schedule and organize activities to conserve energy. Alternate periods of rest and activity. For example, don't do um, workouts or long walks and then you don't have rest and then uh, you would be doing another strenuous activity. So at least structure and schedule and organize activities that there would be rest at least periods for your patient. Maga schedule around walking and then rest and then meal preparation and then rest ulit and then eating. Tapos a little bit of rest again and then walking. So it's not all strenuous for the patient. Okay, next one is relocate responsibilities. For example, the patient is um, used to caring for the child, cleaning, meal preparation, 
here goes the relocation of responsibilities. It's either hiring someone to do it for him or her, or for example, the household um, task or chores would be distributed so that the patient could rest after treatment. Okay, so this one um, also correlates with nutrition, protein and calorie intake, um, makes the patient energetic, okay? And then assess for fluid and electrolyte disturbances because sometimes um, essential electrolytes are lost during re uh, radiological therapy. That's why uh, we have to monitor fluid and electrolyte disturbance. Okay, so regular light exercise. Remember the words light exercise. Don't do hardcore cardio um, exercise. So regular light exercises so that the muscle tone um, won't shrink and at the same time yung endurance and fatigue the, of the patient would be lessened okay next one would be relaxation techniques and mental imagery aside from being a pain management um, this one is a form of rest therefore decreasing the weakness or fatigue for the patient this one is conservation of energy as well add these factors that may contribute to fatigue Example, pain. Usually, di ba, pag in pain ka, um, energy is lost because of the pain. Usually, you are feeling weak, helpless when the pain is there. So, address the pain first so that fatigue would be later on um, ironed out. Administer blood products as prescribed by the physician for anemia or having imbalances with your RBC. Um, and other blood components, blood administration or products must be given as prescribed. Okay. Okay, next one would be body, self-image, and self-esteem. Same as with the hair loss or alopecia. Okay. Assess the feeling about body image and level of self-esteem. Encourage verbalization of concerns. Identify potential threats to self-esteem. Altered appearance. Decreased sexual functions. Hair loss. Decreased energy and change in roles. Continued participation in activities and decision-making. Assist in self-care with when fatigue, lethargy, nausea, vomiting, and other symptoms occur. So this is more of uh, improving body image and self-perception. Okay, another thing with psychological and at least yung return to optimal level of functioning for the patient. Okay, assist in selecting and using clothing that accessories that increases sense of attractiveness. Simple words like, ah, ma'am, that hat looks wonderful on you. You must wear that. Kasi yun nga, it's more of self-appreciating and boosting the self-esteem of the patient. You're not, um, you're not, um, Hindi ka, hindi ka nabobola sa pasyente. I don't have the English term for it. Okay, you're not uh, you're not scamming your patient. <laughs> That's the closest word that I can think of. You're not scamming your patient to wear that hat just for the sake of you to um, make the patient to be dressed and ready for some activities. But rather, you're asking the patient to wear that hat to boost his or her self-esteem. Okay, so... Refer for collaborating specialists as needed. Kung kailangan ng stylist or goods, may kakilalang marunong mag-style na ano, at least mabust yung ano ng patient or nung uh, person na nagkakaroon, nag undergo ng radiation therapy. Okay, so that's the goal of it. Helping and making the patient feel good about his or herself. Next one, assist in grieving. Okay, so maybe I'll just be cutting here. We're done with some nursing management for the part 2. This would be our part 3. Thank you very much for listening. It's been almost an hour. I'll be chopping this one for one hour session so that you could be watching it at your own pace. Okay, so good day guys. And I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson. Stay tuned for the part 3. And we'll be um, continuing this part in Assistance of Grieving. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye.